How much time do we have? Time for what? Sing a song. Say a prayer. Make a point. Take a dare to feel fully alive. No need to strive for fortune or fame. The name of the game is playing to play. Win or lose, seize the day. Lessons learned, here to stay for the moment. How much time do we have? Who knows? Seize it, freeze it, slow it, grow it to infinite supply. Hey, maybe there's no need to die. Longevity is trending, you see. Take these pills. Cure those ills of pesky reminders to curfews and binders to aging and pain. No. There is something to gain by staying awake through each joy, through each ache. It's called clarity. Allowing you to see the coin of experience always having two sides drops through the time slot. You don't have to take that ride. How much time do we have? We don't have time. Time has us. Tied to its ticking, we make such a fuss about things not getting done. Yet had any been finished, it would not have brought fun, let alone a sense of fulfillment. That's too much to ask from this warped prime agenda to finish every task. How about this one? Just live fully till the day that you die. How much time do we have? Who's the we? It depends. It depends. Who's the we? If you mean that collective, that gaggle we call humanity, then time is running out. As long as we're riding this train, of constant consumption and max short-term gain. Sea levels rise, clean water gets low, and the divide between haves and have-nots just does grow into a chasm that no one can cross. Who's conducting this train and this ride at such, at such cost? Can we change the conductor? Or stop the train and get off? Time is now to find answers and making a plan for changing directions while there's time, if we can. How much time do we have? Just enough. Make the rhyme fit the time. It's a matter of skill. It's a function of will. How much time do we have? Enough time to love. Enough time to be loved. I am running into a new year, and the old years blow back like a wind that I catch in my hair, like strong fingers, like all my old promises, and it will be hard to let go of what I said to myself about myself when I was 16 and 26 and 36, even 36 but I am running into a new year, and I beg what I love, and I leave to forgive me. Not all fingers are equally quick. Some fingers are slender, others are thick. Some players are young, others are older. A few are timid, many are bolder. Read the score carefully and you won't misconstrue. What counts is to sit down and play the piece through. Over candlelight, meatballs, and wine, the playing is feeling and really quite fine. Play legatos together, staccatos apart. Sustain with your pedal. Play with your heart. Thank you. Back up, oh crocodile. 
The cartouche along the top of the scroll reads backwards from the afterlife toward this one as it describes the myriad dangers that trouble an Egyptian on the way to heaven. Here, for example, the traveling soul is attacked by four crocodiles drawn with pointy teeth and scaly jaws. The spirit guide rattles his spear and threatens in no uncertain hieroglyphics, retreat, back up, O oh crocodile. Do not come after me, for I live on magic. Happy choice, On. It, is, it secures an essential vitality as if magic were air or water or bread. I approach the temple of Dendar. Outside the window wall, people mummy wrapped against the chill in Central Park scroll by. Inside, I am rehearsing. I live on magic. I live on magic, as if the incantation might fend off crocodiles wherever they find me, in this world or the next. Thank you. I'm a stranger here myself. Can't give you directions or suggestions. Surrounded by death and resignation, I witness the passage of time. The sun rises, sets, the moon looms on the horizon. I belong nowhere. Everywhere is my home. I witness comings and goings. I wave hello and goodbye. It's all one motion. Directions vary accordingly. The way in determines the way out. From where I stand, it's the same landscape. Hopes, mountains, deserts of despair, Rivers of regret, just beyond, the garden waits. Looking within is all the direction anyone might need. The landscape shifts, changes, yet remains the same. Finding the way means going step by step, following the true map written on the heart. All will eventually arrive with or without directions. Lying down on a perfect surface on your back is the best, she said in aisle two. As she pulled the tamari paste off the shelf, I would suggest that you call her, ask her to watch you, help you check. She doesn't have a passport and she needs to leave the country next week said the business-suited man urgently into the phone near the chicken broth. <laughs> I can hear what they're saying. I am tuned into their worlds, but not my own, as I roam this high-end land of plenty. I sent you an email, no? Asked the short, man, bald man with a Russian accent. You need a good mattress, insisted the new age, brightly clad gypsy woman talking into her phone while following me to the bread. <laughs> no, actually. I need my brain drained of worry so that I can sleep. It's not my back that is the problem. It's the chaos between my ears. Listening outside myself is easier than trying to calm the storm within. I think I need to meditate. I think out loud. But no one is listening to me. Did I want to be heard? Yes. Yes, I did. What should I do with the full cart that is my life? What everyone else does. I check out. <laughs> My idea was to create a project aimed at helping the men to connect positively and at the same time to learn a little about the ethnic backgrounds of one another. I hoped it would bring more understanding and address the diversity that many times resulted in separation and negative attitudes. Anyone who wanted to participate would be invited to talk about their country of origin, including personal facts and information that would make it interesting. Maps were not allowed in the unit, so I encouraged the men to be creative in their descriptions of the land, location, climate, geography, people, industry, anything that would be interesting. After a week of preparation, 
we began. We learned about Puerto Rico, Haiti, Italy, the Dominican Republic. And as each country materialized, there was a ripple of energy fused by questions and discussion. For the moment, it transitioned the unit where the norm was depression into a learning center for all of us. A young man stood up and asked to talk about his country, Vietnam. Although he was not born there, he learned what he knew from his father who had come to the United States after the war. He described the country and the people and how the war had caused so much suffering for his father and his family. Before he could go on, a man at the back of the room raised his hand and interrupted. In a shaky voice, he said, I was in Vietnam, and he began his story. He had just turned 18 when he was drafted by the Army and shipped overseas. He was sent out to the countryside, to the fields, where he was sometimes separated from other soldiers. All he could remember was the fear that lived in him. He shot at anything that moved. It could be a cow, a fellow soldier, the enemy, an innocent person. It didn't matter. He used whatever drugs he could get a hold of to dull his senses and keep the horror out of his mind. The drugs followed him home, and he was never able to overcome his habit and leave the past behind. When he stopped talking, the young Asian man picked up with his own story. His father left his family in Vietnam and all that was familiar to him, arriving in the United States without money or employment. He lived with anger and depression, and life was a struggle. The story ended with this man's own account of how he became part of a gang, got involved with drugs, and ended up here in prison. There was silence in the room, and then both men stepped forward, walked towards each other, and embraced. It's 7.30 p.m. on a chilly Monday night that I decide to visit my Grammy. As I entered her room, as I entered her dimly lit room, I look over to see the shadows on the wall of her small body frame, her arms lying by her side with her hammer toe feet sticking out of her colorful afghan like a sore thumb. The TV is yelling at the top of its lungs I cannot believe that most of her roommates are still peacefully sleeping, except for the one woman next to her that keeps yelling, please, please help me. Please help me, oh my God, oh my God. I glance around to see that the only place available to sit is in my Grammy's wheelchair. I remove her ancient worn shoes, worn out shoes with the broken laces and take a seat. Looking up, I see all of her stuffed animals comfortably cuddled up together in a small blue basket. My Grammy looks like she's sleeping, her eyes half shut, but then she slowly opens her big brown eyes. I whisper, hey, Grammy, hi. She perks up a bit. She says, who's that? I say, you know who I am. She says, is that Susie? I say, yes. I decide to show her all of the stuffed animals that she won playing bingo. Mm -hmm. Grammy, this is a little pink kitty. She laughs. <laughs> she has a deep raspy voice, and she takes deep wheezy breaths. I show her the next one. Grammy, this is a little gray rabbit. Focusing her eyes, she says, it is? I wonder how she can see anything at all through her two inch thick glasses. She is 105 years old. She can spell magic and still write her name and the alphabet. She, clo she slowly closes her eyes. I say, Grammy, are you tired? She says, tired doing nothing. I laugh. I, I, go I bend over. I lean over to give her a kiss goodbye and say I love you. She always says, you're the best. And I always say, no, you are. We give each other a big hug and smile together.
idle no more. With the sun we rise. Earth stewards with eagle eyes guard all life. Earth beings full of life rise with us. Rising up, today is new, another world coming. Listen, you will hear our new world, feel her life. We will round dance, all the ancestors joining us, birds singing. We will round dance all over the planet, healing life. Dance unites everyone, loving the Earth Mother, rising for her future. Hear the drum, Earth's heartbeat calling you. Imagine generations at peace, sustainable life. When we moved in, you said how good it was to see lights shining again in our small house. You weren't alone yet. Neither of you <coughs> seemed old. Evening by evening, leaning on my hoe, I watched Dick bent and lively, wielding his. Morning by morning, saw you hang your wash. A long line propped, lopsided by a pole, shifted mid-morning for the shifting wind. Hot days, late afternoons, perched side by side, you watched the traffic like a matinee, naming the whole world's business or trying to, and probably told some knee slappers on us, your well-intentioned wayward neighbors who stayed awake all hours of the night or fell asleep and left the lights to burn. Now lamps set up on timers pretend to be you, echoing following room to room, the predictable pattern of your widowhood. By my window, I still check across the lawn, hear your wry voice as clear as if you called. Something I still need, something I still might find there. Thank you. Urban winter bottoms out in February. Twilight days of bone cold overcast. Indoors, man-made deadlines shriek for forecasts of the quarter after next. Outside, it's just another Tuesday when all that flourishes is mildew. Sleet sharpens tiny knives against the face and every cul-de-sac and alley is saturated to the curbs with resignation. The city harbors sullen anger at winter just for being there. In revenge, it sucks out life and gives back rage. Native energy pent up and itching to get out. Nothing's free in this town. One desperately neutral day, you laid a long white box in my arms. Crisp tissue paper sheltered long green stems. Tulips, robust red and pale, pale yellow. Delicate irises and purply blue. Carefree orange, gold, and crimson poppies. Balloons of hope in my heart. Bright kites of love.
flames flicker low Evening sky stars aglow The table's clear, all put away Hush, my dear, let us pray Come, my dear Yellow lines of the road Forever run round the bend For laughter and long lost friends Blessings of a good day journey's end There's a time to grow and leave A time to wander, risk and dream Comes a time to bid so long A time to stay where you belong And drop your bag Yellow lines of the road Forever run round the bend For family and long lost friends Blessings of a good day journey's end Yet some days you are unsure At the end of the driveway You wonder where to turn As you walk on back up the lawn Your days of wandering are gone Cause this is your home And you find love and your long lost friends Blessings of a good day journey's end Thank you. This morning, a different kind of quiet and the first snow of the season feathers the dark edges of the driveway. Leftover mums and ornamental grasses, now all a pale dust white. I know there are suddenly impending turkey dinners and the question of gravy. Too much time now for pondering the plausibility of gifts, dutiful visits, the eventuality of a tree strung thick with tiny white lights. Already non-stop holiday songs are playing on all three radio stations, but here, the scarred kitchen counter remains. There's oil and Velcro, a half-burnt jasmine scent candle, and that crescent-thin mark on my cheek, one that I never remembered to show you. Also, the miniature replacement harmonica arrived, and so tell me, how am I ever supposed to look at that moon again when I never learned how to play it in the first place? How can I want just what I have? How does anyone, when there's no getting over anything or taking anything back, Tell me, please, how does anybody ever keep going? Testing eggs or choosing a movie, making the day's trip to the gas station or dry cleaner, when the world is fist hard and frozen, 
when wind keens at the window and I tell myself that this is what I've chosen and it's already snowing again. Passenger. In life, we are passengers. In life, you take a single train. There comes a time when we decide to open the curtain and realize the large number of, of trains that run parallel in different universes, other lives that run parallel to ours. Trains vary from model and size, but the curtain remains closed as the passengers of a dimension feared crossing atmospheres. It's just inevitable. The eyes are dazzled headlights with the lust of new trips. And every human being is a very special trip. If you count, if you count the trains, wagons, seats, and men, you'll be lost in a web of relationships. And it's that web, apparently confused, which are common stock. People who share the same inner journey, and they have a common sense. The sunset in the same shade, a passenger of time. Thank you so much. Muito obrigada. Em português. <laughs> <laughs>